How do you know if you're ovulating? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and every single day I get asked questions about your fertility and your body and I am here to break it down and make it easier for you to understand. If you wanna help spread our message, please hit subscribe so that this channel can grow and more people can learn about their bodies. Today's topic is all about ovulation. How do you know if you're ovulating? What are signs that you're not? When should you be worried? This is often something I see every time I have a Q&A on my stories on Instagram is that people are always concerned that they are not ovulating. If we think about it, it can be hard. Some people know, they can feel, they can tell, and some people can't. So to quickly go over what happens in the cycle and then the different tests you can do to know if you're ovulating, how you can use different methods of fertility awareness, and how ovulation relates to getting pregnant signs that you may need to get evaluation sooner, all of that. So first of all, I want you to think about the number one thing your doctor is going to use is a good history. And I know that sounds crazy, but truly getting a good medical history, knowing that your period is coming regularly and predictably, meaning if you look at a calendar within a few days of variance, you can put your hand on a date, your finger on a date, and know that's when your period is going to come that's the number one sign that you're ovulating because nothing else is going to give you a regular consistent cycle. Now, remember, if you're on birth control pills, you are not ovulating and you might be having a regular cycle, but that is purely because of when there are sugar pills or when you take a pill break, you're having a progesterone withdrawal and that's causing you to bleed. So sometimes I see patients who say, I've had regular periods for years, I've ovulated for years, but now that I've stopped the pill, I'm not ovulating. And it's important to remember that when you're on the birth control pill, the birth control pill is ethanol estradiol and some type of progestin. These hormones together are telling your brain not to send out any of the hormones that normally are sent that are important in ovulation. So none of the signs or symptoms of ovulation are valid when you're on the pill. That doesn't mean that the pill is bad. The pill can have many uses, but just not in this way. So when we say your period is a vital sign, what we really mean is if you're not taking the birth control pill or on hormonal contraception, it's telling us how your hormones are working. So the way I always describe it is if you imagine that your ovary, that there's a vault where all your eggs are kept, that at the start of each month, a group of eggs comes out of that vault, each egg grows inside a follicle. So the brain is going to send out follicle stimulating hormone and this process actually happens while you're bleeding. So as you're on your period, your brain knows you're not pregnant and starts to send out FSH. Now FSH is very well named because it stimulates a follicle to grow. So one of those follicles, which is a fluid filled structure that houses an egg, one of those follicles responds to FSH and grows to maturity. As it grows, that follicle is making estrogen, and that estrogen is making you feel great. This is the follicular phase, named because a follicle is growing, and follicle-stimulating hormone is the main hormone from the brain. The main hormone from the ovary is estrogen, so this is estrogen-dominant. So if you draw random labs in the follicular phase, you're going to have estrogen, medium to high, depending on where that follicle is in its growth stage, more estrogen as the egg is more mature, and no progesterone. There's no progesterone. Nothing is making progesterone yet. When that egg gets to maturity, your brain doesn't actually know what's happening in the ovary. It can't see the egg. It doesn't know that the egg is mature, but the brain can sense that estrogen level. So that estrogen feeds back to the brain and tells it that there is a mature egg. And this is from a high level of 200 picograms for 50 plus hours. So a persistently high and elevated level the brain says, hey, the only thing that's giving us an estrogen like this is a mature egg. And then it sends out a surge of LH or luteinizing hormone. And this surge tells the follicle that it's time to rupture and the egg comes out and you ovulate. And that is the ovulation time period. Now, when you are trying to detect if you are ovulating or not, one way is that you might feel it. So this is actually called middle schmerz, which is a German word, meaning in the middle, because you ovulate in the middle of your cycle if you have an average length cycle. And it feels like a crampy pain, and that's actually just that cyst rupturing. 
right? The follicles assist and it ruptures and the egg comes out and that can be painful. And some of that fluid gets in your abdominal cavity. So if you have middle schmerz, you feel those cramping in the middle of your cycle, you may actually say, I'm ovulating today and I know it because I can feel it. Another way is that you can check cervical mucus. So cervical mucus is the mucus barrier that's at the cervix, not exactly what's coming out, what you might see at your external vulva, but actually what is inside your vagina near the cervix. And the best way to check cervical mucus is to put two fingers inside, grab, pull, and stretch. And if it is sticky like egg whites, that is because the high estrogen level is thinning out that cervical mucus and making it stretchier so the sperm can get through. Your body naturally has more hostile cervical mucus when there's less estrogen, and that is a way that some other contraceptives work to help prevent pregnancy. So that's another thing that depending on sometimes when we see somebody who might take herbs or other things that have estrogen or progestin-like properties, it can mess up interpretation of your cervical mucus. Things such as like decongestants or being dehydrated, being sick, that also might make your cervical mucus harder to interpret. But you get that day four mucus at your peak estrogen day, which correlates with the day of ovulation. The next thing is that you can use an ovulation predictor kit. And personally, this is one of my favorites and I have a whole video on it. An OPK is a urinary based kit, kind of like a pregnancy test. And what it is to detect is LH. Remember though, LH we're only care when it's surging, that first peak. It might start to get a little high, but we want that first peak. So when you take this test, what we recommend that you do is take it around the same time every day between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It doesn't have to be first morning urine, even though the box says that. But what you're looking for if it's a line is for it to be as dark or darker than the control, or if you're using a digital, it'll tell you you're ovulating. You do not need to keep taking a test after you get a positive, and that is because your LH is going to be rising and falling throughout the entire luteal phase. So we only care about the first positive. This is LH, remember this is before you ovulate. So in general, a positive LH or positive OPK is the day before you are ovulating. That's important because if we're trying to time intercourse for you to get pregnant, if you're trying to get pregnant, the egg is only gonna live for 24 hours. And if it's not fertilized in that time period, it's done. That means getting sperm there so it's present when the egg in is root is really important. And sperm can live in the female reproductive tract for up to five days. So if you're tracking with cervical mucus, we recommend intercourse the day of the type four cervical mucus. If you're tracking with an OPK, then we recommend that you have intercourse the day of the positive which is the day before ovulation and the next day, which is actually the day of ovulation. Now, another way that you can detect if you are ovulating is going to be checking a mid luteal progesterone. So what really happens to that follicle after it ovulates, it heals back and it becomes a different type of cyst called the corpus luteum. Note here that at most times in your cycle, if I'm doing an ultrasound, I'm going to see a cyst on your ovary, functional cyst, very normal. But this corpus luteum now is really important because it is making progesterone and it's being stimulated by the brain. Those pulses of LH are stimulating progesterone to rise and fall. And it can be anywhere as low as three or as high as 40 throughout the entirety of the luteal phase and all are normal. A higher progesterone does not mean better in a natural cycle. So you can check a progesterone about one week after you ovulate and if it's over three, you ovulated. Now it's really important that it's timed right for you because this test is often called a cycle day 21 progesterone based on a normal cycle length of 28 days. And if your cycle is 35 days long, then you're probably not ovulating till day 21 and your progesterone would still be low. So checking the test at the appropriate time, which is about one week after ovulation is when it should be. So if you wanna have the blood test or you're concerned or your periods are irregular, we should be checking it about a week after we think you ovulate or a week before the expected period. And that's because the luteal phase is relatively set. It lasts for about 14 days. And this is because that corpus luteum makes progesterone only for a set amount of time. And then if you're not pregnant, it dies and your progesterone level drops and you get a period. The brain senses the fall in the hormones, starts sending out more FSH to get another group of eggs coming. And that drop in progesterone tells the uterus there's no baby and you bleed. 
So that corpus luteum only lives a certain amount of time. So if you have a 35 day cycle and that corpus luteum lives at most about 14 days, you're gonna ovulate then closer to day 21 instead of day 14, like if you have a 28 day cycle. So that is also called the calendar method and that's how you can track if your periods are very regular. The last thing to mention is that you can use basal body temperature. What this means is that the presence of progesterone raises your internal body temperature. Typically, you see it elevate about three days after ovulation. Of course, at that time, the egg is already gone, so it's not good for tracking in the cycle. But if you have regular periods, you're trying to detect when do you actually ovulate within that cycle, then using some type of either thermometer or a wearable that tracks your temperature and seeing when it elevates and going backwards will help confirm that either you did ovulate when you thought or understand when you are actually ovulating in your cycle. A study did show that apps alone, remember apps are just using the calendar method. They are taking the average period length and they have a calculation. And so when they tell you this is your fertile window in the day of ovulation, they are basing that off of 28 day cycles. Now, if your period starts being longer, the next one is 32 days and then 35 days. It's gonna be averaging these out to try to detect when you're ovulating. But a study showed that apps are actually unreliable at actually getting the fertile days wrong for a lot of people. So understanding your body, meaning if your periods aren't regular, that's actually a big warning sign. And I have so many people who say, yeah, my period's regular. And then when we start looking at the calendar, we see that it's not, that it might be four weeks, then five weeks then three and a half and then six. And that is what I call irregularly regular. And there might be an underlying ovulation disorder in that scenario. Another sign that something could be wrong is a lot of spotting in the luteal phase or really short luteal phase or really long cycles that are getting 40 days plus. Those can be signs of thyroid, prolactin, PCOS, ovulation disorders are on a spectrum. And then of course, if you are not having a period and you're not on any type of contraception preventing a period, then that's a big red flag and please go get an evaluation so we can understand what might be going on. Hope this video helped you understand your body a little bit more, your period, why your menstrual cycle and your period is a vital sign and helping you determine when you ovulate. Of course, the last thing to say is that in a fertility clinic, we often don't do any of that and we just look with ultrasound. It becomes really our extra insight into your body. So if you start getting care and treatment, we will often override this process by looking with an ultrasound, sometimes using a trigger shot to just force you to ovulate and be able to time everything perfectly. And that can be one advantage of seeing a fertility doctor. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast, put some questions below that we can answer either now or in a future video, and you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks friends.